Position your patient in the same fashion you would for a traditional spay. About two fingers beneath there. This is a 10 blade I like to just try uh, because the worst case scenario is that we're not going to be in and our CO2 isn't going to work. So we're going to pop in our port and then we're going to spin it down a few times. We just want the this to kind of go in the tip because although this is plastic, it can get some insufflation here. So kind of like a nice little balloon there. So I believe we are in. So normally I would pull up with my mosquito hemostats and find the peritoneum and visualize it and cut across. But All right. we just... Good. Our second port under direct visualization. So here we're just kind of going, um, trying to do our caudal port. So we don't want to go too far um, in a big girl because your instruments want to be able to reach. So you want to be able to get um, all three of your ports in. So for her, especially because we are concerned of a pio, <laughs> we're going to go. Right here, so we can see our finger. You can kind of feel the linea with your finger, too. Um, so we can see our scalpel blade going in. And then... If you don't get it directly on the linea. The beauty of muscle is it will close right back up. So now we are going to flip her towards me. So there's a button on the top of your tilt table. You want to put a hand on her. We like to hold them, make sure that our bungees are holding and secure. Hello. So if your organs don't flop out of the way, you're just wanting to make sure that you're taking atraumatic graspers in there to kind of move your um, essential organs, of course, out of the way. All right. You guys are good recording. So here you're clamping on the suspensory ligament. The instrument clamps all the way. And then you're depressing the thumb button with your finger and you're hearing the beeps go through their cycle and then you're sliding the blade to transect the tissue with your trigger finger and then you just go get another bite so right now dr simpson's yeah. camera is in her most caudal port and her vessel sealer is in her most cranial port and then her grasper is in her middle port so that she can pull up on the ovary because we're suspecting this dog is having has a pyometra we're going to do an ovario hysterectomy and we're going to free up all of the suspensory ligament pedicle. All right. You're good. I just, my visualization was off here. So I may be able to go into this yep. broad ligament here. Beautiful. Just make sure. Hey, maybe this will be good for you. You can this have a video on a laparoscopic pyometra. This is exactly what I'm thinking. <laughs> oh, I was like, what just happened? So. Maybe one more bite? One more on that. And how big is mango? Said. Mango is 88 pounds. 88 pounds? 88 pound mastiff. And roughly how old? Uh, about a year and eight months. Okay. And this is her a uh, month and a half after her first heat cycle. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to tilt her back to three. Flat. So again, we can see. Fantastic. And you're just letting gravity, after you clamp it on there, you're just letting gravity hang. Yeah. Yep. And hold that instrument. 
And if it were a normal dog spay, let's say 30, 40, 50 pound dog, what, what's your time? How long does it usually take uh, you to do a spay? About 20 minutes. For a laparoscopic spay? For a laparoscopic spay. Um, and that's from cut to completion. Okay, skin to skin? Yeah. Um, but when you're first learning, there is a learning curve, mm -hmm. but most of my docs were then their fourth or fifth procedure. Where you have to be ambidextrous. Yeah. Because you have to climb through that hole. So what I'm going to do is focus now on the uterus mm -hmm. and ligating off the uterus. So what I do is I grab the linea and do a deep cruciate and then I come back and do this uh, do an intradermal and then um, hide the knot um, for this bottom one which would normally be your cranial one when you do a pexy I would do um, probably a three layer closure because it is large um, and then I would do like a cruciate on the skin what bites are you trying to get so I'm, so I'm getting the linea or, you know, um, as best as I can, and you can feel it, you can visualize it on your first one, and then, um, and then I use my suture to kind of pull up on it too, so I can get my second bite through the linea, and then I just kind of walk that needle up. So now we have a deep cruciate. And then I pull it parallel to my incision. And then 